Hey there, this is Jacob. Today I'm doing a review on two different products. Um, one is the new tents. This is Country River Products, the Trekker. It's a two-man, three-season tent. Uh, the second one is uh, this is an older A-frame tent. Um, it's by a company called Diamond Brand, and it's the Free Spirit 2. <coughs> and um, I wanted you guys to see uh, what a traditional A-frame looks like compared to the River Country Products tent. This one typically went somewhere between two and three hundred dollars for the free spirit this one you can buy on Amazon for somewhere around fifty to sixty dollars um, this one's got a lot of bad reviews to it and I don't know why considering it's an A-frame and what A-frames actually do what they're intended for but uh, I wanted you to look at both of them and see how they're built see, uh, see how you close them and zip them and all that type of stuff so you, you see there uh, there are pros and cons of Really, all in all, um, this one has poles, this one does not. This one used trekker poles typically, or it says you can use uh, sticks that are 42 inches long. So I just took a, a, a sapling and uh, cut two chunks out of the sapling. The sapling's a baby tree. And one here and one on the other side. Uh, the only thing it doesn't come with that I would recommend is uh, maybe some uh, nails or screws that you can screw into the top of your sapling. <coughs> there is a metal ring hole here on the top. It would be nice to have something you could screw into the top of your sapling, pass it through that hole so this doesn't fall off at all. Because really this is meant to have a walking stick, trekker sticks, that you flip the stick over, stick the pointy end through this metal hole on top, and the other end goes down hold up both sides. But again, if you don't have it, like in this case, I don't have it and it's standing and it works just fine. So, but, um, okay, this is not the Eureka Timberland. I know it looks just like that. Uh, I believe the Timberland is not that well built. I know a lot of people have bought it over the years, but as you can see, this one has uh, holes to go up the side and inside these actual pieces of cloth on the side. They, uh, the Timberland from Eureka has like a loop, one, like one loop on the side here where the pole passes through the loop to keep the tent open on the sides. And it's just one of those things gets clipped or whatnot, you know, uh, or breaks off or something like that. It's just, to me, that's not that dependable. This is a much sturdier system, not to mention the, the materials built into here. It's a much more sturdy fabric uh, than the... Uh, Eureka Timberland is. Uh, this, again, it's the Free Spirit 2. Uh, Free Spirit 2 was a two man. They had, the, they had a, a four man tent. It was a Free Spirit. They had a third Free Spirit. They had a, a door in the front and a door in the back. But this is the Free Spirit 2 for a two man tent. Really, it's closer to more two and a half man. I mean, it's kind of spacious. Uh, I'm six foot one, about 230 pounds, and uh, I fit in there just fine with somebody else and still have a bit of room left over for your boots or whatnot. Traditionally, backpacking or whatnot, you take your backpack, you hang it on a tree that's got like a, an old branch hanging out the side of it or a knob or whatnot, you hang it on, uh, on the side of the tree and uh, you put your, uh, your rain cover, which is a, a covering that goes over your pack, over your backpack so when it rains, your gear doesn't get wet. Uh, it's not generally supposed to go inside the tent with you. I've always skipped that law and I've always brought my backpack in the tent with me and made sure my food and smellables weren't hanging in a bear bag somewhere and I never had problems with animals coming inside my tent. That's just me. Everybody's different though. Um, I left the, uh, the fly off the top of the tent and I did not put footprints on the bottoms of the tent because this is just a demonstration. I'm not camping in these tonight. Um, footprint on the bottom keeps all the moisture on the bottom of the tent. Although I do recommend, it doesn't matter what tent you're in, <coughs> always have a footprint on the inside of the tent. Uh, footprint is just a, typically a tarp, or uh, they're more commonly made out of uh, painter's cloths. You buy at Home Depot, they start at two mil uh, thick. They go three mil, four mil, five mil, six mil, they'll work up. You get the thicker ones. Uh, there'll be big sheets and you measure your tent size out, the floor of it, and uh, uh, the floor of your tent, it will be uh, one footprint. Your second footprint, you'll want to rise up the walls inside of your tent, kind of like you're sleeping in a bowl when you're in inside of it. So if water does seep in, 
be a, a heavy rainstorm or you have to be in a pothole and you just didn't know it, <clears throat> which has happened to me before, you'll never have a problem getting wet because you're always sleeping on top of a, an additional uh, piece of plastic that's inside the tent. Just make sure it's riding up the walls at least six to ten inches on all four corners. So when it goes inside, you're literally in a bowl and it's, it's riding up the walls. That's what they tried to accomplish on this one. This one, the bottom of it is more of a tarp. And there's no rain slide, but this is meant to be a waterproof type material. So what they recommend that you do is to buy a, uh, a fabric sealer and uh, a seam sealer, which I have two right here. This is Scotch Guard. you'll buy it at Walmart uh, by 3M Heavy Duty Water Shield. This works marvelous, works. It does really good on shoes, two or three coats of a pair of tennis shoes. You get them wet, it's not, so, uh, it's not soaking through. They work well on gloves, um, work well on tents and fabrics and uh, help to better seal umbrellas and, and uh, general clothing, coats, whatnot. Uh, but, <clears throat> Really, you want to spray down the entire outside of the tent uh, and the inside of the tent. Uh, two coatings is always good, but for a general tent, uh, one to two cans, typically if you're coating the entire tent, um, the stuff you may go through pretty quickly. Seam sealer. So the, the tent is made of fabric. Fabric comes in long sheets. This uh, sheets are sewn together, which creates seams. And the seams you want, this is a, uh, it's a, it's a milky colored liquid uh, that dries clear and it's gonna brush on the top, it squirts out and you'll kind of just paste it and brush it over the seams on both sides. So it seals in those seams, gets into all the, the pores that might leak on you and seal all that type of stuff up. Um, so seam sealer for, especially around the entire bottom here, uh, well, you got the sides where the threads are that on the side here we've got seams, we've got seams going across the top, we've got here where this is going with this particular material here, we've got seams on this itself, so we're talking uh, turn the entire thing inside out, hang it up, and do a, a section at a time, sealing everything, and, and you'll do the same thing with a uh, <coughs> with the two to three hundred dollar tent. Uh, the uh, Three Spirit will do the same exact procedure to it. This one's over 20 years old uh, and it's still in great condition because you take care of your equipment. Um, this one feels more like a poncho, but then again, I climb inside, I get inside, I work with it, it works just fine. It does just great. Um, so, let's get a little bit closer. I do want to say this though, um, hypothetic, hypothetical scenario, uh, imagine yourself sitting inside of a vehicle, um, you've got a friend with you in the vehicle, it's, uh, it's, it's cold outside, you're inside, the windows are rolled up, and, uh, uh, within a few minutes to several minutes, the windows all fog up, because the liquid from your lungs inside your body and you breathing fogged up the windows on the inside and moisture came out of you and fogged up all the windows on the inside. Same thing happens in a tent. If the tent is not well ventilated, if it doesn't have uh, at least two different windows, uh, I, I, I'd say uh, one, uh, one opening uh, and the, the, then the door seal just creates one vent so you vent off some of it, but you want a, a cross breeze. So it's like opening up two windows in a car, cracked. Um, I'd say start off with a quarter cracked or a third cracked when it's, when it's a tent. What that does is it creates a cross breeze. So as you're sleeping at nighttime, which you're breathing out of your lungs, and maybe the person next to you is breathing out of their lungs, uh, you don't wake up the next morning coated in water. It doesn't mean the tent leaked. It means that you trapped all of that moisture inside the tent, it did not give it an exit point, and all of that moisture now ended up on you. You woke up, your sleeping bag soaked, you're soaked, uh, and it, you're just you're soaking yourself all night long. It had nothing to do with water seeping in from the outside. It, it has to have a good ventilation system. So this is their, uh, I think it's their second or third edition of this particular product, and they reworked some of the venting systems on there we're going to look at here. Um, 
this one, your two main ones, there's a window in the back of the, uh, on the three screws, there's a window in the back, uh, half the size of, of the tent. It zips down on both sides and rolls down. We'll see in a moment here. And then it has the door. The, the door has a screen on the inside and then the door itself closes. So you'll keep the screen closed on the inside, but you'll zip down the door just a little bit to give you an airflow, as well as the window on the back of the tent. This one has vents on the back side, but they're screened in, so bugs can't crawl inside. On the front side, it has the closing system here. It has this piece that just zips down. It does not have a zipper on the bottom part of each side. However, this one, this is going to keep the bugs and flies off of you. It, it, it's a mesh. Um, it zips straight down and it zips closed here from the side. So you're going to be bug free all night long. Not something to worry about. I had this one closed up. But if you're rolling these back again, Inside is a little like toggle piece here, and I'll get closer to it here in a second. Then you'll take the second one, roll it up, and use the same toggle piece to close over and go through the loop on the other side. There. So one toggle piece and a loop on the outside and a loop on the inside for both doorways. That's how it's meant to be on both sides. Keep it open. There's no, uh, there are loops on the inside here. There's a loop here. Uh, it's a, a circular plastic loop attached to a piece of fabric, freely floating on the inside here. Um, that you could attach a, like a guideline to on both sides and maybe hang your socks up while you sleep uh, or wet fabrics or different things to air out or, or lights or whatever you want to do from there. Um, there's no need for a string or something on the inside to hang up once these are in play. It's pretty sturdy. So what you'll do is this piece will go in. This black piece of fabric here will go over the top of it. We'll ride up right next to the green piece here. Do that again. Over the top. And as you're over the top, you're going to be holding this orange piece, pulling a ton as you put it in place. And you'll position this just where you want it, typically right in center, and kind of closer towards the front here. You'll wiggle it back and forth to get it right where you want it to be. And then you'll pull, pull on down. On the bottoms of these, they give you a little uh, black piece here that you're meant to be able to pull the string through, like so. And then this piece uh, goes on to your actual stake in the ground, and then you're supposed to be able to pull on this to cinch it up and down. Um, to me, these can slip. Um, in, in Boy Scouts, uh, when you're a kid, you learn the top line hitch. Um, I don't have enough time right now to teach it. But the top line hitch is something you can Google or YouTube or there's plenty of uh, even free apps for your uh, Android or iPhone out there that are not apps to teach you how to tie different, all kinds of different knots. So the, the top line hitch is a T-A-U-G-H-T uh, top line, L-I-N-E. So top line, what it does, once you tie the hitch, it allows you to tighten the knot or let out some of the line of the knot while still maintaining the knot. So if this is too loose, I could pull up on the knot and I could tighten it while it's still tied. Let's it go back and forth. Without and this can be wet line and it still works just fine. It's not gonna come come off. It cinches on itself. Uh, the top line hitch. Very useful knot. Next to the bowline, I, I'm not sure which one's more important to me. I, I like them both. They're, they're two very good knocks. <clears throat> so, let's get a closer look. Tent bag, and then a 
that drawstring bag. For your product, your product really only fills two thirds of the bag. So the bag's actually too long. The product was tied up in this. Lengthwise, you'll fold it over, fold it over a second time, a third time, and possibly a fourth. Either a third or a fourth. It'll get down to about yay big. Okay? And then you'll start rolling very, very tight. Push out some of the air. Tighter, tighter. Push out some of the air. Tighter, tighter until you get all, all of it out. And your stakes will lie right inside your rolling as you're rolling it. So your stakes will be on the inside. So let's get a little bit closer. As you can see, the, the grommet here on the top. So, like I said, uh, bring a, uh, I'd say one of those screws that you could screw inside that has like a hook on the top piece that you could screw inside of uh, a timber. Like, I'd, I'd bring like a, a 10 pack with you, the super light. That way, in case you lose one or two, you still have some. Um, <clears throat> or they strip out on you or something. But you'll be able to screw right inside and then hook it right through the grommet. So this doesn't actually move around on you if you were to accidentally come out here and hit it at nighttime or something. Um, that would be really useful. But that's where your trekker stick would go. Flip it over. Go right inside. Sometimes you see miscellaneous threads or thing like this. Just trim them. It doesn't mean it's bad craftsmanship. It has nothing to do with that at all. So far the craftsmanship's been really good on this guy. So when you set this one up, <clears throat> you'll stake down four stakes, one, two on the other side over here, and then two on this side over here as well, three and then four, and then you'll erect it with your uh, sticks up here at the top. Once it's erected, then you'll come back here and adjust your stakes, so don't put your stakes all the way in the ground, um, put them in like halfway, so you might have to... You might have to pull the stake back out again and then pull on this, this way, or this way, or whichever, to make this straight and taunt all the way across. You want it to be tight and t uh, uh, pulled tight on all four corners to give you the max amount of space on the inside. These are pulled down like so, and all, the, all these two side ones do is open up the inside. So, here they are, these two side ones. They open up the inside so the whole tent isn't just pushed down inside and falling in on you. So it opens up the inside. Back here, you're given one stake in the back. It says it goes with eight stakes, uh, four for the corners, two for the sides, and then two for the front and the back. I, if it were me, I would add two more just for these back here. Now let me set this up so I can explain. So, we have these lines all go back to one stake back here in the back. Let me make sure I can see that one stake. Okay. So I got one stake here in the back. Typically, we put a stake in the ground, we put it at it, not straight down, but at an angle going towards the, the actual tent. So my angle will, instead of being straight, will kind of angle this direction. So it's going in, and then when I tie on my line to it, it's actually pulling it towards the tent. But since it's under duress in the ground, it's stronger than going straight in and flopping back out this way again. So it's got one stick um, for all three of these lines. One line is for, obviously, the 42-inch the, uh, sapling here that I've cut. It's 42 inches long, holding this up. The other two are for my venting system. That's where this is, and I'll show you on the inside. It's holding these open. They're halfway up, and I think they've done this for the fact that when it rains, rain's gonna sheet off of these without going inside. Let me get a little closer here.
falling all over the place. Okay. So, drum it again. <coughs> so they've opened these up because there's mesh on the inside to keep the bugs out. But it's also here so if it's raining or I've got sheeting rain coming in this way, it's not going to get water inside the vents but I'm still able to vent out air. So it's creating a draft. So I've got a, uh, two holes here to give me a draft on this side, as well as on, uh, uh, on the front side as well. So like I said, you wanna create a draft. You want two points to where uh, your screen is open, well, your tent is opened up with the screen closed so air can vent. So wind's blowing and it's just venting out everything. Bad smells. Um, <clears throat> moisture, humidity, all that's being vented all throughout the night. So you wake up the next morning dry. <laughs> so if it were me though, I would carry another two stakes just for these lines. But they're having all three go into the same stake. It's working for now, so I'm not going to knock it. But if it were me, I probably would have added two more. Um, not a fan of the red uh, stakes either. Uh, I would upgrade those, but those are 50 cents a piece of Walmart. It's not a big issue for uh, aluminum stakes or stainless steel, which, whichever one you want to go for. Um, so that one's there. Uh, let's move to the inside. Repositioning my tripod here. I'm gonna get the legs just right so I can bring you inside. Okay. So as you can see the opening here. I have uh, about 58 inches, but as I'm crawling in, about 18 inches here. So me being a big guy, I can still one single person obviously I'm in the center if I'm just me I'm probably a little bit farther over about here and then I'd probably put my pack beside me but regardless my head's not hitting the wall and I can still move a little bit to get to where I'm going yes the tents are set up on a hill but I'm perpendicular to the hill so if I step outside I don't fall down the hill <coughs> back side here we have a little gear pocket, very tough, very small. Uh, I wouldn't trust it personally. I wouldn't want to rip it there or anything. I probably wouldn't use it. Um, a warning label here. Yeah, never carry a flamer or, or uh, open sources of heat near a tent. It's a bad idea. If the tent gets hot or uh, burns while you're inside. The burning tent is burning plastic and it latches onto your skin kind of like um, glue. I mean, it can literally latch on and you'll have third, real nasty third degree burns for the rest of your life. It, it's really, really, really disgusting is what happens. So, so we have that. 
Uh, you can see the vents here on the back side. These are screened. And I cannot see through the vent, so that means the, the uh, I can see just about down here. So about two or three inches below is where the, the bottom of the outside rain protector piece is actually dropping to. So um, it's still venting. still there as well. So coming inside now. Open this toggle. Open the other toggle. Here and then here. Like I said before, you have There it is. You have a loop on the outside, a loop on the inside, and a toggle attached to a uh, piece of fabric here. You'll roll one door, doesn't matter which door, doesn't matter which direction, whichever direction you think looks prettier, or you think it looks better going this way. Oh, and there is a Velcro on the insides here. So when these close, they actually stick close together with Velcro, like so. See? So it's got a few Velcro patches down to the bottom, but this rolls closed. The toggle wraps around, goes through the piece, then you do the other one. And then the toggle goes through the other loop. Now you got one toggle for two loops. Same thing for the other side, holding it directly open again. Now I'm gonna take out the toggle since I've shown that. I can zip all the way down. Well, first I would do the outside zipper, but let's just say the outside zipper was closed. Eeks done this to begin with. This is the part they never really show when they reviews and it always kind of upset me because I, you know, I figured this would be a big thing. To me, one of the biggest things of a tent is uh, not to be eaten alive by mosquitoes or, or other dangerous creepy crawlies. So, you've got a zipper, zipper here on the bottom and it's got a, it's got a a piece on the outside and a piece on the inside, so it's double-sided. Be gentle when you're closing zippers like this. And if the zipper is rough, a tip is, anytime you have rough zippers, even on older equipment, even on backpacks or luggage or clothing, you take uh, a bar of paraffin wax or uh, beeswax works as well. Beeswax is probably better. Um, and you rub it uh, liberally over the zipper. Uh, it may, uh, it, what it'll do is it lubricates the zipper. And then you work the zipper back and forth and you add on some more uh, wax or uh, paraffin to it. Uh, paraffin is typically sold as gulf wax in the grocery stores on the uh, canning aisle where you'll see mason jars and different things for people that like to make their own jams, jellies or apple butter or whatnot and uh, you have paraffin wax there to help seal things. So you buy paraffin wax and it's sold as, uh, I think the brand name is like Gulf Wax, a few other different brand names. But they'll come in bars and uh, people use them to make fire starters, all kinds of things. And you take the bar and you'll just rub it, like uh, use the zipper as if it were a, uh, uh, a bastard mill file. And you'll just take the uh, wax and rub it back and forth over it and it'll work itself into the zipper. And then you work the zipper uh, piece up and down, this piece here, back and forth, over it, even to these if you want, and that way it'll actually, the zipper will work like it's new again. So this seal's closed. And now no more bugs. So typically I would seal my door first and then this, but the door, 
does not zip at the bottom here. So the Zor really just keeps the rain out. Um, but as far as uh, there being a bottom zipper to the door, there isn't one. And I can see that doesn't hurt anything because the whole inside here completely zips closed and keeping out the bugs all night long. Just like I said, your zippers, be very gentle with them. It has nothing to do with things being cheap. It has everything to do with just taking care of your gear. This is a tent, it's not an RV. RV, road vehicle, uh, we call them campers. Mobile homes. Let's get out of this thing now. One of the things that came with here. Uh, mine didn't come with the fabric kit. Uh, fabric, excuse me, fabric repair tape, but I don't really care. I don't really care about that at all. And it came with a instruction manual. I mean, most of this review is this tent, but I'm gonna go over the other one here just briefly. Other than the fact that the Eureka Timberland uses um, uses materials that are less than that of the Free Spirit, um, they're basically the same tent, really close. And you can pause and. Go over any of the instructions you want, if you'd like to. It says to use a, a particular silicone water guard. I don't like silicone water guards because they typically have a very strong smell. They're nice for boots, typically, but uh, even tennis shoes I don't like to use them for. It's just they, it has a, it's, the smell just really doesn't go away after a long time. It's, it's, it's horrible to me, personally, but that's just me. Okay, this one, really spacious inside, very nice pockets, very spacious inside, it's got a double door, okay, and the fabric on this obviously is, you can see that this is a, the mesh is a lot finer mesh, a nicer mesh than per se the mesh that you get here you see but this is still usable i'm not going to have bugs coming in my tent at night time so i have that there and you see on the very back side see the big opened up window so i can create a i have an ant crawling on the inside already because my door is open <coughs> Here it is, mesh on the outside, on the back side here, and it's a window. I can zip it closed, so I can start by leaving part of it open. Now this has So I got two particular uh, tent bars here. This one's purposely bent because it just gets the uh, um, the rain fly on a lot easier. And what they do is they go on the outside of the tent here, like so. Position my tripod here, give you guys a better look.
Okay. I'm gonna hurry up because it's getting dark. So normally, rain would flow right inside the window here, but these poles make it to where the fly comes out to here. So it drops the fly down, so that way the rain doesn't actually sleep inside when I'm trying to vent things at night time. If I'm sleeping in the rain. Inside here is. Uh, uh, a piece of fabric notch on both sides. So this will go over the entire top. It'll go on one end of the pole. The corners here and little hooks. Little hooks come down here and hook on the end. Again, poles on the tent. I'll show you why I have a bent pole over here. Yes, I was in the Boy Scouts when I was a kid. Lots of camping there, lots of experience and different things. <coughs> on here, you have loops on the inside, toggles. Make sure my camera can see that. Yep. You have toggles on the inside of the actual ring fly, and you have pieces on the outside here, these little fabric pieces. The toggle just goes inside on each one. And then these, when you come to mount these down to the ground here, sticks, they pull away so the rain fly isn't actually touching the sides of the tent. Okay? There for now. Now, to make this easier to go together, what I found out when I was younger is I would take this one off and it was bent for a reason. See, it's bent on the end here, a nice little curvature bend to it. So we've got a bend to it. I take the bend and stick it straight into the loop and then I put it back on the little notch here coming out the end while it's inside the loop so it'll go on just like like that now I didn't have to do any pulling or ripping or trying to get this on and when I go to take this back off and I'm all done, I simply just pull on the pole on this side and go from there. The rest of these will all flip down. Looking like so. Now the point of setting this one up is to show you... This is a general A-frame. What it looks like. And you can see the sides of here, how these got these wings here that actually drop down. Similar on the Eureka from uh, Timberland there. <clears throat> and I come back over here on this one. And it's similar, it's got the covers here, the cover over the actual screen on the inside that we saw earlier getting too dark to see that but that's it you're getting inside your tent make sure you take off your boots on the outside of your tent unlace them take them off on the outside
before you uh, then uh, then pull your feet down into the inside of the tent. And I get closer here so you can see it. Diamond brand. Diamond brand, uh, I believe it was 1891. That's how old they are. Um, they're really old companies They've been making camping gear and tents for Adirondacks at, at uh, like scout camps or military type tents for a very, very long time. It's a uh, much older company. Used to see them in camp more a lot. Um, but <clears throat> no matter what type of tent you buy, doesn't matter what you buy, the cheapest, cheapest tent even from Walmart, you can make do with. The, the one thing they fail on most of the time is, uh, is the actual rain fly. So what you can do One second here. This is a rain fly by uh, Kelty called the Noah's Tarp. This is the 12. I'll flip it over here in a second so you can see what it is. So it comes in a 9 foot, a 12 foot, and a 16 foot. And then you can see its dimensions as I get closer here. These things survive torrential downpours. So if you buy the cheapest tent in the world, let's see here, three season shelter. Um, poles not included. <coughs> taped, taped seams. <coughs> it's a very lightweight fabric compared to most tarps. I mean, it's like this type of fabric. Okay? So what you do is <clears throat> um, most tents, they don't get the, uh, the rain fly to, to give enough coverage of the top of the tent and then they leak when you're out camping. So set up a, uh, a tarp over your tent when you're camping and uh, have a, a few feet on each side of your tent and uh, give it enough slope so the water slopes down the side and doesn't pop it on top of the tent. Uh, it's on top of the tarp over the tent to make sure the tarp isn't touching the tent so it's like at least a foot above and uh doesn't matter what you're in uh i could be in this one without the rain fly with the big tarp over top and still not have to worry about uh um getting wet all night long <clears throat> the 12 foot noah's tarp is uh it's just the right size if you're uh, uh sleeping in hammocks and you want a rain fly um to sleep with and it's extremely lightweight um, the 12 is only two pounds. Um, let's see. This one here, this tent here is uh, almost three pounds. It's like two and a half pounds. And then this one here is uh, closer to, I believe, six pounds. <coughs> Another helpful thing uh, in production of this video to me was a, uh, a Baco Laplander saw. Um, a real lightweight camp saw. Uh, the teeth on the saw are the, are the same amount of teeth that you'll find on bone saws. So these are actually uh, can be used to process game if you uh, happen to uh, uh, kill and cook an animal when you're out and you're eating and whatnot. Uh, you can use the same saw to process your game with. So um, very good saws, very good price saws by, made by Baco. You'll find them on Amazon for somewhere between 18 and 28 dollars I think I got mine for around 20 so um, the last thing that's helpful for out here is uh, I always have an s-wing axe with me uh, the, uh, the the campers axe um, orange handle so it's easy to find if I drop it and uh, what's uh, the hatchet this is the hatchet and it's called a camp axe as well even though axes have longer handles typically. But you see the see this little piece here built into it? This little notch in the bottom of it? That is designed to pull up tent sticks. So if I grab it and I go down to get a tent stick, I can pull it up or I can get the edge of the stick lodged into the groove here and I can uh, lift up, pry it out of the ground or pull it out of the ground or whatever I gotta do to get it out of the ground. So it's all one piece, no wood here. Just like an S-wing hammer. And uh, 
this is not meant for uh, splitting wood. It's more meant for felling. It's meant for uh, cutting things down. Uh, you could cut up a log with it if you're uh, <clears throat> splitting off certain sections and whatnot. And that's it. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.